I'm Pasco from CEO, trying to break down some of the climate jargon. Greenwashing is when companies shout from the rooftops about this tiny little green activity they do whilst hiding all the really bad polluting stuff they do. Um, that can be, for example, BP putting out big adverts about creating fuels from waste when in fact its main business model is digging up and burning oil and gas. This is a crazy futuristic technology being promoted by polluting companies so that rather than stopping their polluting activities, which put huge amounts of emissions into the atmosphere, they're going to try and capture those emissions and bury them underground. Uh, unfortunately, there's no commercially proven examples. We've spent billions in public subsidies over the decades uh, into failed projects, but still it's been promoted by many polluting industries so that they can carry on with business as usual today and claim that in the future, they're going to capture these emissions, but it doesn't work. It's experimental and it's very expensive. Net zero is the idea that we're going to reduce emissions as much as possible, and what you don't reduce, uh, you balance out by sucking that equivalent out of the atmosphere. Um, but what we're seeing instead is that lots of big polluting companies are increasing their emissions and saying, don't worry, we're just going to suck that amount out of the atmosphere. So the likes of BP and Shell are actually increasing their oil and gas production, but they're saying, don't worry, we're just going to plant loads of trees and it's going to uh, balance itself out. Yet again, what it means is some of the biggest polluting companies get to carry on with business as usual and not change their business model. Rather than cutting emissions at source, what polluting companies are doing is trying to buy offsets, buy someone else's emissions reductions elsewhere. So practically, instead of closing a gas-fired power plant, we're seeing companies paying for trees to be planted elsewhere or renewable energy projects. But a lot of these so-called offsets don't lead to real-world emissions reductions and often result in human rights abuses. For example, BP planted loads of forests in America, in California, which have all gone up in smoke. So all the supposed emissions reductions have not been realised. They've gone back into the atmosphere uh, whilst BP has carried on polluting. And elsewhere, we've seen forests turned into carbon sinks, offsets. Um, and unfortunately, what that means is for the people who used to live in those forests, they've been kicked out. So you've then seen land grabbing and human rights abuses because we're now claiming that a forest is a place that's a carbon offset rather than someone's home, rather than an ecosystem, rather than part of a, you know, a biodiverse area. Industry wants us to believe that fossil gas is a clean solution because it has half the emissions of coal when you burn it. But what they don't tell you is that when you drill for gas and when you transport it, huge amounts escape into the atmosphere and gas is made of methane. Methane is a greenhouse gas more than 100 times worse for the climate than CO2 over a 10 year period. And because of this leakage, uh, that huge amounts escapes and it's going through pipelines or being put on ships or being fracked for, that means the carbon footprint of fossil gas is as bad as coal. Hydrogen is the new silver bullet that's going to decarbonise the economy, or so the fossil fuel industry would like us to believe. Uh, they claim it's green and clean because when you burn hydrogen, it produces water vapour. However, the vast majority of hydrogen produced today comes from fossil fuels with a massive carbon footprint, as well as local impacts on communities' environments where the fossil fuels is dug up and transported. The claim is that in the future hydrogen will be green from renewable electricity, that's uh, one way to produce it, but today less than 1% of hydrogen in Europe comes from renewable electricity. Uh, the vast majority is from fossil fuels. So what does the industry tell us it's going to do? Install carbon capture and storage, this failed technology that we know is not reducing emissions. Um, but what we've seen, there's been a great study come out from Robert Howarth showing that the carbon footprint of carbon and capture and storage hydrogen, aka blue hydrogen, is worse than just burning gas, burning fossil gas. So actually this idea that hydrogen is going to be clean is complete rubbish. And in fact, it's a full solution promoted by the gas industry so they can carry on with business as usual. So we know we need to transform our economies and our energy systems away from fossil fuels and many polluting practices, uh, coal mining, etc. Some really 
polluting industries are going to have to end. But if we leave that transition to the market, we know it's going to be done in the interests of shareholders and CEOs rather than workers and communities. Uh, and many of the workers are simply going to be thrown onto the unemployment scrap heap. That's how the market works. So what we want is a transition led by workers and those communities themselves to ensure that it's in the interest of people on the planet and not profit. We know many jobs are going to end, but many are going to be created. And it's about what sort of economy and what sort of jobs we want in the future, in our sort of climate friendly, sustainable future. Many people think that means green jobs, working in the renewable energy industry or insulating houses. But in fact, climate friendly jobs are much broader than that. A lot of those jobs are going to be care jobs, looking after the young, the old, the sick. These are the jobs that we should be valuing in society that don't have a carbon footprint, but are the, the core of what sort of community we want to be building, what sort of society we want to be building, and what sort of economy we want to be building.